Okay, so let's talk about that. Database options for gambling apps. Now, you might not be building a gambling app yourself, but gambling is a really fast growing industry right now, and there are some really interesting technical challenges at the database level, so let's talk about it. Before we get into the technical stuff, we probably need to talk about what it's like to actually use one of these gambling apps, because if you're not a gambler yourself, you might not be aware that there is a lot more to it these days than just betting on whether or not a team will lose. Uh, there's in-game betting, there's live betting, now there's something called micro betting, and you can actually bet on things as granular as what's gonna be the result of the next pitch that's going to happen in a baseball game as you're watching it. So from a user perspective, it's a really smooth, easy experience, right? I'm watching the game, I think of something I wanna bet on, I check the odds, I press bet, boom, done. I don't really have to do all that much, but from a technical perspective, to accomplish that is actually really complicated. If you think about it, right? Okay, so now we've got a chart, and I think this is going to be a helpful way for us to look at some of the challenges. And again, I wanna emphasize this is just some of the challenges. There is a ton of technical complexity uh, that goes into even just the database stuff that's happening in a gambling app. But here are some of the, the basic, some of the biggest, most important ones. So what are some of the challenges when you're building a gambling app? Uh, well, one big one is Latency. There's a lot of data that's got to move back and forth, and it's got to move back and forth really quickly because the odds are changing constantly and plays are happening all the time, so everything is changing and everything needs to be up to date on the user's phone so that they can place an accurate bet, and it needs to get to the database quickly so that the app can assess what actually happened. So to do that, you have to have as low latency as possible, and often that's going to require a multi-region database deployment so that you can locate the data that's relevant to a user as close to them as possible so that every time the app is sending some information back and forth, it's not having to send it all the way across the world to wherever your servers are over there. Um, so multi-region is an important thing for most global gambling apps, and one of the reasons for that, not the only reason, but one of the reasons for that is that it improves that latency. Another major challenge is scale. Obviously, if you become a gigantic gambling app, then when you have these massive sporting events, for example, if we're talking about sports betting, you're gonna have a ton of people on your application trying to do the same things at the same time, and you need to be able to handle that on the database side. But it's more than just scale because it also can be fairly unpredictable. Now, if there's a big game happening, like let's say the Champions League final, Yes, you know that's a predictable workload, right? You know a lot of people are gonna be betting during that time. But with all of these in-game live betting type things where you can bet on these very, very granular events, you're getting sudden workload spikes in there and that isn't predictable. So you need to not only be able to scale, but you need to have that elastic scale and even be able to automate it as much as possible so that you don't need to try to predict whenever people are going to be placing a lot of bets and be using your application because you aren't always going to be able to predict that in this world where you can bet on almost anything. Another big challenge is availability. And specifically, you need high availability, right? Now, obviously, there's no industry where it's acceptable for your database to just be going down all the time. That's not a thing that users in any industry will accept. But in gambling, it's especially high stakes because there's so much money on the table. It's literally high stakes. Uh, and if your users are trying to place a bet and they're not able to, or they place a bet and it doesn't go through because your database is down, you're gonna have a bunch of very, very angry people talking about how much money you lost them. And because this is a fast growing industry and it's very competitive, a lot of them are probably gonna be talking about your competitors and how they're maybe thinking about switching over there. So. This is really, really non-negotiable for any gambling app. It just needs to be available. It needs to work. Um, and kind of implicit in this, in that high availability is also, of course, you can't have any data loss. So even if something does go down, if you've got a node that goes down or something like that, you cannot have that information be lost. You can't have a situation where a user placed a bet and then it just disappears into the ether and, and there's no record of it. So this is really, really important. Another big and really important technical challenge on the database level is consistency. Needless to say, your data needs to be accurate. You can't be having issues with errors. Uh, that means it all needs to be valid when a transaction processes, it needs to process completely. 
Uh, you just can't be having problems with that. You, you can't have a situation where a user has placed a bet and you don't know if they won or lost because, for example, um, you don't know whether that bet came in before the event that they were betting on happened. And that takes us into the next challenge, which is actually related to consistency. We could probably group these into one um, column, but I'm, but I'm going to keep them separate just so we can talk about them a little bit separately, which is serializability. In the context of a gambling app, you need to have at least some level of serializability in terms of your transactions, which means you need to know an order of when each transaction was processed and committed to the database so that you can know this bet was placed at a time when the odds had already been set to this and then the event happened in the game later. And so therefore we know that this user won this bet at these odds and we can pay out this amount. To have that, you need to have that sequence be clear. You need to know when the odds changed, when the user placed the bet, when the event in the game happened, and you need to know what the order of those things is. So you don't necessarily need to have 100% every single thing be serializable, but all of that core stuff, it has to be serializable at least to the extent that you know what happened first, you know what happened second, you know what happened third, and there are no doubts there. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the different options that are out there when it comes to choosing a type of database. Uh, and the first and the oldest, kind of the most traditional option is a SQL database. And I'm gonna add up here a traditional, a traditional SQL database. So this is the stuff that uh, most of us are probably familiar with, have probably used before. SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, that kind of database, right? That the traditional relational database, it's been around for decades. It's tried, it's true, it works. But is a traditional SQL database a good option if you're trying to build a gambling app? Well, let's assess it according to these five challenges that we've laid out. So we'll start with latency. And we said that multi-region, having support for multi-region is pretty important for that because you want to be able to locate your data close to where your users actually are. Uh, there are also regulatory reasons why it's good to be able to do that, but we won't even talk about that for now. Um, traditional SQL databases were not built with multi-region in mind. So that's a functionality that you can, you can tack that on if you want to, but that's a lot of engineering work. It's probably a lot of ops work to upkeep it. They just weren't built to do that. So in terms of minimizing latency, that may not be the best choice. Scale, unfortunately, we got the same thing. Most of these databases, when they were originally designed, People were thinking about a single instance database, a literal physical server that's in your office somewhere and everything is going into and coming out of that. So they just were not built to scale. You can try to hack that on manually. Again, you can do sharding and things like that, but this is very intensive in terms of engineering, in terms of operations. It's difficult, it's manual, it's, it's just not built to do that. Okay, so availability. Well, again, we're gonna run into the same issue because these databases were not designed to function in this kind of cloud, multi-region, distributed world that we're all now living in. Uh, they were designed to be that sort of single instance database that's uh, just, just sitting on that server somewhere in your offices. So can you create a traditional SQL database that has high availability through trying to, you know, maybe doing some sharding, setting up different nodes in different locations? Yeah, it's possible. But again, we're talking about a bunch of manual work doing something with these databases that they just weren't really built for. The strengths of a traditional SQL database are down here in that consistency and serializability. Most relational databases, you can at least opt into having ACID transactional guarantees, which really gives you that consistency. You can opt into this serializable isolation level uh, that gives you that 100% boom, 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 boom transaction order. Uh, there is sometimes a little bit of work involved in doing that. They often don't have, you may not have ACID transactions by default just because you set up a traditional SQL database, but it's doable. They're built for that. You've got that schema that's guaranteeing that all the data that's coming into your database is following the rules that you set up. It's all valid. So you do have that strength there. But obviously we can look at this and go, okay, well, this is not an ideal solution. So what else is out there? Well, the next thing that came along was the NoSQL database. 
Not a very good cue, but hopefully you can read that. To be fair, there's a lot of different NoSQL databases out there. Different ones have different features, but in general, they are built to scale. Many of them are built to be distributed. They're kind of built for this more modern world that we're now living in. So we've got some of these check marks, or at least we can have some of those check marks with some NoSQL solutions. Uh, the problem lies in the fact that while we've added these advantages, now we have some disadvantages too. A NoSQL database is not a relational database. You don't have the schema to enforce the sort of data validity and rules that you would have with a traditional SQL database. So that adds some extra work if you're trying to get to these things. Now that doesn't mean it's impossible. There definitely are gambling apps that use NoSQL databases, but it's a bit of a challenge. It requires some engineering work on your end. A lot of times you're going to have to enforce a bunch of data schema on the application side because it's not happening in the database. Uh, in some cases, for example, I can think of one major gambling app that primarily uses a NoSQL database, but they have to use this really restrictive data types called CRDTs that is difficult to engineer around. And it really took them a lot of work, a lot of testing to get that to be able to work, to get to a state of being able to get to eventual consistency. With a traditional SQL database, we get this, but we need a lot of engineering work and hacking to get this. With a NoSQL database, we get this, but now the engineering and kind of hacking is happening here and you're putting more effort into that side of things. So for a long time, this was the world that gambling app developers lived in and the world that pretty much every developer lived in. You have to choose this trade-off between do you need the consistency more? Do you need the scale more? But now there is a third option, as you can probably guess from the third column here, and that is called distributed SQL. When I talk about distributed SQL, I'm really gonna be talking specifically about one database, and that's CockroachDB. So one reason for that is that I work for Cockroach Labs, full disclosure, not trying to hide that. But honestly, the more salient reason is that the distributed SQL databases are new. There just aren't that many of them out there. And many of the ones that are out there just aren't mature yet, at least for this kind of enterprise level, high stakes application. But CockroachDB is. Okay, so let's go back to the challenges and we'll start with latency. We said that multi-region was important for that so you can locate your data close to the people who are actually using it. CockroachDB supports multi-region. Now let's talk about scale, that easy elastic scale where you can scale up and down. And again, CockroachDB supports that. It was built for that. It's a distributed database, meaning your data is located on a bunch of different nodes and it's replicated all across all of them. So you can add more nodes if you need to scale up, you can remove them if you need to scale down and you can automate all of that so that it's not a manual process and you're having to predict things all the time. So you get the same sort of easy scaling as you would see from a NoSQL database out of CockroachDB. Availability, same thing. Uh, it's called CockroachDB because it's hard to kill just like cockroaches, right? They're everywhere, you can't get rid of them. Uh, it's gross when it's cockroaches. It's great when it's your database. You don't want your database to be killable. So we've got that high availability and we have that no loss of data, which of course is, these are things that are important for every application, but for gambling applications in particular, super, super important. Now, consistency, and this is where the distributed SQL database sets itself apart from the NoSQL database because you do have that strong consistency. With CockroachDB, you've got ACID transactional guarantees by default. You've got serializable isolation by default. It just comes with this stuff built in. And you can treat it just like you would treat any traditional SQL database. SQL is something that everybody knows, right? Your developer team knows that. You're probably familiar with this. You've worked with SQL databases before. No SQL, there's a learning curve here, right? Because it's different. You, you aren't using SQL anymore. You aren't using the same kind of schema. Distributed SQL database, it's a distributed database, it's cloud native, it was built to scale, but it's still SQL and you still can treat it the same way you would treat any regular SQL database that you're used to. So you can use the schema the same way that you would with a traditional SQL database. Now, obviously we are oversimplifying a lot of very big, very complicated problems here. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. We haven't gotten into all of the other challenges. The, the big gambling apps, you might have dozens, you might have hundreds of different data-related services that are all operating 
at the same time to try to take care of all the things that need to be happening for your application to function. Uh, just to throw out one example really quickly, you might need to be doing some kind of logging for auditing or something else where you need to take the changes that are happening in your database and send them to Kafka or something like that. Um, so distributed SQL databases, CockroachDB has a solution for that too. It's called change data capture. So go ahead and Google that if you wanna learn more about that. But my point is just that there's a lot more complexity than just these five kind of big high level challenges that we've talked about here. But you can already start to see how we can solve some of these problems just by the database that we choose when we're starting to build a gambling app. If you're interested in diving a little deeper into some of these technical topics, leave a comment on this video. You wanna dive into acid transactions, item potency, things like that. We'd be happy to get into that in future videos. So yeah, just let us know what you wanna learn. And if you're interested in this, you think a distributed SQL database might be the right choice for you and your application, the good news is you can check it out and it's free. We've got a free serverless distributed SQL database. You can spin up a cluster and be up and running in a, under five minutes. So get out there, go kick the tires and check it out. Distributed SQL is the future and we would love for you to try it for yourself and see why. Thank you.